Okay, Adab, good morning, everyone. My name is Marcelo. I am a lecturer at the Comparative Humanities Program here at Habib University. And in the fall 2021, I had the opportunity to teach a course named Global Histories, Military Regimes in South Asia and South America. The purpose of this course was to provide my students with a critical understanding of military regimes, both in Pakistan and in several South American countries, such as Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. And I would consider this to be a very successful course for several reasons, mainly because it helped my students challenging a lot of misconceptions that people usually have about how you learn, about how you teach, about how you write history, right? Which misconceptions were those? First of all, the idea that history is boring because it's only about memorizing facts and dates and events, right? Whenever I tell people that I majored in history, they usually think that I spent four years of my life going to university just to memorize dates and names and events. A second misconception that this course helped my students challenging was the idea that history is useless because history only deals with the past. What's the point of talking about something that has already happened and that will probably not happen again, right? And the third misconception, what is the point of learning South American history in a country like Pakistan? So I would like to share with you here today how did my course manage to encourage my students to overcome or to debunk those very common misconceptions that people usually have about history, okay? So, to the first misconception, history is boring because it's only about memorizing facts and dates and events. Throughout my course, I showed my students that facts are for history what bricks are for a wall. Now, what does that even mean? Uh, let's suppose that I pile up a lot of bricks here. They won't be a wall, right? In order for those bricks to make a wall, there must be some specific kind of interaction. There must be a cement gluing them together. And interestingly enough, the same thing goes for historical facts. In order for historical facts to be considered history, there must be some specific kind of interaction between them so that you can call them history, right? And the cement that glues historical facts together is the question why. The why for history is what the cement is for a wall. So throughout my course, I have encouraged, especially in my classes, in the assignments, I have encouraged my students to ask meaningful questions. Instead of asking questions such as, when did General Ayub Khan seize power in Pakistan? Or who were the five military dictators in Brazil? Or when did the military seize power in Argentina? I encourage them to ask much smarter questions, such as, why did General Ayub Khan seize power? Why did the Brazilian military regime have five instead of just one? military dictator. Why did the Argentinian victory in the 1978 World Cup help legitimizing the Argentinian military regime? Right? So whenever we're writing history, why questions are much more relevant than who, than what, than where, than when, and this is something that this course uh, managed to, uh, uh, to show to the students. Right? on why questions are much more fascinating, okay? To the second misconception that this course also helped challenge, the idea that history is useless because it only deals with the past. Well, indeed, history is the study of the past, or rather the study of the remnants that this past has bequeathed to us. But history is the study of the past only as long as it gives us tools to act in the present and only as long as it gives us hope for the future. 
right? Studying the past as an end in itself is meaningless, right? We only study the past in as much as it can provide us with guidance for the present and with hope for the future. A history that does not teach us what to do in the present and that does not give us hope for the future is just like a fountain with no water. It's useless, right? And I'm happy to say that one of the main guidances that this course has provided my students for the present was to fight for democracy. Because the more we studied authoritarian regimes, the more my students could realize how vulnerable and how fragile democracy can be, right? So do not take democracy for granted. This was one of the main messages, one of the main tools that this course has provided to my students. And the third and final misconception, what's the point of learning South American history in Pakistan, right? Well, South America and South Asia share pasts of authoritarian rule and fragile democracies. Despite all the differences that one can find between Pakistan on the one hand and Brazil, Chile, and Argentina on the other hand, all these countries share a past of authoritarian rule. And the more we learn about the other, the more we can learn about ourselves. And this is something that I could also notice in my course. The more my students learned about military rule in South American countries, the more food they had for their thought, the more tools they had to think about the military regime in their own country. And it also goes the other way around. The more I studied military regimes in Pakistan, the more I could understand, the more light I could shed on my previous knowledge on South American military regimes. Okay? But there's a fourth and final misconception, I would call it a bonus misconception, which I didn't mention earlier, uh, uh, that this course also helped challenge, right? It's not really a historical misconception, it is more like a geographical misconception, although it does have significant historical and political impacts, which is the idea that this is America, right? I notice here in Pakistan, different parts of the world, not only in Pakistan, how many people tend to consider America and the United States as synonyms, right? And given that this course was a course of military regimes in South Asia and South America, before talking about South American military regimes, I had to problem problematize the sole concept of America. And then my students could understand that this is not America, but rather this is America. That America is a continent and not a country, right? I used to joke with my students, whoever writes in their essays, America as synonyms with the United States would just fail this course, right? Because I told them, if you write America, I am assuming that you're talking about the continent and not about uh, the country. Okay? Thank you so much for your attention.